Hello from me, I'm super excited to be back here again. You're welcome to today's episode on one-on-one show with Dr. Papi the African philosopher. My name is Jennifer Yara and I'm here with Dr. Papi the African philosopher. Today's topic is all about symbols and its meaning. But before I proceed, let me ask the simple question. Did you know that all the astrological symbols in this world have a very special meaning? I guess you don't know too. Just relax. Today's episode got you. Comment, like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Without wasting much time, let me welcome Dr. Papi the African philosopher, on today's episode. Dr. Park, you see the African philosopher, you are welcome to today's episode. Thank you, my dear. How are you doing? I'm doing great. By the grace of my living God, I'm so fine. What that, about you? I'm fine. I'm fine, thank you. That's today's cool. topic is all about signs, symbols, and its meanings. But then we are limiting them to um, the planetary symbols. Okay. So, but before we proceed, let me just ask you, what, what would you like to say about symbols? and its meanings, or signs and its meanings. Okay. Thank you so much. In the first place, I thank my living God for the life he has given to me. Okay. I have the strength, and blood is moving up and down in my veins, arteries and capillaries. It is not by might, it is not by power, but everything that works inside me right now is as a result of his own grace, yes. for which reason I'm alive. So I thank him. Amen. When we say symbols, symbols are simply some marks or some designs which we use to represent something in nature. Okay in nature as in a character, mm -hmm. in nature as in time. Okay. They can also be used to represent the properties or the qualities of something. Our ancients were able to derive symbols from the signs they saw of the things they experienced in nature. Okay. When we say Science. Science simply means that something natural, okay. like an animal, like a tree, like a stone, weather, time, all these things are signs. But in order for us to remember some of its qualities and how they operate, mm -hmm. The ancients represented these signs with symbols for us to be able to communicate it well. Before you be able to communicate something well, unless you remember that thing. Okay. So these symbols are used to represent these signs in nature okay. for us to be able to communicate it well. Okay. It serves us, it gives it an identity that sign and identity okay. for the symbol to become part and parcel of our everyday life in our various cultures, in our various religions, etc. Etc. That's it. Okay. So, on uh, the very first um, planet, that's the sun, the symbol is a circle with a dot inside. A circle, just a circle with a dot inside. Does it have a meaning? I know it has. Yes. So you're going to explain it one after the other. <laughs> so let's let's start from the sun. We call it glyph. Okay. Or glyph. Okay. Have you heard of this word before? Hieroglyphics. Yes, I think I've heard it before. Egypt. When you hear the word hiero, H I E R O, it means priest. Priest. Chief priest. Priest. Okay. So H I E R O, it means priest. Okay. A religious man who is an adept. Okay. 
who is well experienced in the fields of occultism and mysticism mm -hmm. or esotericism in general, okay. who has the ability to communicate some symbols to us okay. based on the science that he experiences from nature. That is through two ways. Okay. One, okay. conception. And two, what is known as sensory perception. Okay. Like the sensory, you are sensing something or... Is yes. it the sensory, sensory neurons yes. you are yes. talking about? When we say, we use the word perception. Okay. Perception is something we experience from the outside world. Yes. But there are instruments or elements that come together to make these to make these experiences possible, okay. external experiences possible. Okay. They are known as our senses. Okay. Our senses are those peripheral nervous systems that are attached to the central nervous system. It is distributed in every part of our bodies. Okay. That makes it possible for observation through our eyes, our ears, our nostrils, our tongue. All these areas have their own nerves. Okay. So these nerves are all connected to the, the brain and the spinal column, okay. which we call the central nervous system. So if I use the word sensory, it means that these nerves through the neurotransmitters okay. make them possible. An example of neurotransmitters are neuropinephrine. We have the GABA. Okay. Uh, we have the, the, the dopamine, etc. Okay. So our ancients were able to look at signs and omens okay. and made symbols for them. For us to be able to, to mark them or to, to remember them anytime we try to communicate them to the other person. So the word hiero, as I made mention of in the, in the first place, okay. represent a priest. When you look at the tarot cards, you can see the feet in position, eh? but it is the seat card. It is known as the hierophant. Yeah, the tarot cards. Thank yes. you. The man is a priest yes. with two slaves that are bowing before him. That man represents group identity. It represents religion and it also represents culture. Okay. Is it the man who is dressed as a king? Yes. Oh, okay. He's known as Hierophant. Someone okay. who is able to interpret spiritual messages for and understanding to understand. Okay. Perception simply means that receiving information through any of these five senses. Okay. When they enter the human mind or the brain, we are able to organize them, identify and interpret. Organization, identification and interpretation is known as perception. Okay. Hiero means the priest, but glyph means that different shapes or marks or compartments or structures okay. That have been put together to make a symbol. So, hieroglyphic or hieroglyphics means that those ancient priests who were known as adepts oh, were able to use birds, some humans, and some objects, put them together, and sometimes even made them separate from one another and use them to represent their alphabets. So, if you look at the Egyptian, Egyptian the alphabet. They are not as raw as that of the Greeks, which we, we, have, we have used up to today. We have the A, we have the B, we have the C. To Z. To Z. And the alphabet of other languages. We have the Akan, we have the O, we have the F. All these things are known as glyphs. Mm -hmm. They are symbols. Okay. We, they can be put together you, or you can separate them, having given it specific identities for us to be able to know how to represent them in nature. Okay. Yes. Okay. So when we come to the astrological symbols, what are some of the glyphs or the various elements that come together to form what is known as symbols? Okay. Example, we have, example, the O okay. we see in a can. Yes. We have a circle. Yes. Because when you are writing ABC, you write O. Uh, we have half circle like the O. Yes. We attach that O to a vertical line. It becomes P, the letter P. Yes. When you make the O, double and attaches it to a vertical line it becomes b. b capital b thank you <laughs> and we have the c we have e etc yes. these glyphs 
have meanings, but the meanings must become so rational that directions, positions, and degree of that glyph must have its own meaning. Okay. Not just any glyph. You can write anything and go away. Okay. So, as I am explicating what you have asked right now, you'll be able to see clearly why the planet Jupiter has the semicircle okay. on top and it has the, the plus okay. or a vertical and a horizontal line crossing each other and where the, this semicircle attaches itself to this plus okay. and it will make the meaning of Jupiter possible. Why Saturn has a plus and it has a semicircle beneath or below, okay. it's attached to the vertical and horizontal line crossed. Okay. Doctor, for simple um, understanding, when we talk of degree, what do you mean by degree? Is it the hotness and coldness of something? No. As we know. I'm in, not in, talking in, about temperature. <laughs> I'm talking oh, okay, as in position. Yes. Okay. Position. Temperature, we can use glyphs to represent temperature. Okay. But here I'm talking about the upward or the downward position of that glyph when okay. it is attached to another. Okay. As, as I explained, you'll be able to understand fully. Okay. So let me answer that of the sun. Okay. When the you sun. see a dot, a dot, many books have said that the dot has no meaning, but esoterically, the dot has meaning. Okay. And it is considered by me, example, as a glyph. The dot represents a single pointed consciousness. Mm -hmm. The full stop. The full stop. Okay. Everything you see around you, the vast universe with the galaxies and other things you see around you okay. came from a single pointed consciousness. We call it singularity. Singularity. The universe itself is vibrating. Okay. So it's a sound. So we call it sing. Okay. So singular came from the word sing. Single, the universe is singing. We call it vibration or sound. Okay. Okay. When you see the dot, it represents that consciousness, the God particle, the subatomic particle that came out of darkness. We call it prana or chi or life force that came out of the darkness. That is space. That dot. That dot. That small dot. That dot. Okay. So when you see a circle, the circle represents space. Okay. We call it the cosmic root substance. Cosmic. A substance without form. Okay. It is limitless. It is eternal and it is infinite. But that single pointed consciousness, light, came out of the dark. So when you see a circle, it means that space, we call it Akasha in Hinduism. Akasha. Akasha. It's not Akasha, <laughs> which we use to wash our bathrooms, etc. I was just about to say that. No, so Akasha. <laughs> so Akasha means space. It represents the female principle okay. and it is represented by a circle, circle. an empty circle. Okay. But if the dot comes in the middle, it's it becomes thing. two forces of light and darkness. That is the light represents the dot, the consciousness, and the whole space represents space, that is darkness. The female principle, yin and yang, in Chinese mythology or esotericism. When you see a circle with dot in the middle, it means that the consciousness has become a force that is part and parcel of the control of time. Time is a cycle. Okay. Everything ends and it begins again. Anything that has a beginning, but that hasn't, that has no end. It's known as infinity. Okay. Yeah. But something that has no beginning and it has no end is known as eternity. It has no it's, beginning. And it has no end. It's eternity. Eternity. And something that has a beginning, but, but has no, no end. end. It's known as infinity. Oh, okay. I'm not getting the difference. <laughs> <laughs> so when you see the circle with the dot in the middle, okay. in astrology, it represents the sun. Okay. But it represents the spirit. Home, home in a can. Okay. The spirit. Anywhere you see the circle, it represents spirit. Okay. Some glyphs omit the dot, yet we consider it as the spirit. It represents the individual 
two forces coming together to create the spirit or the individual, mm -hmm. air and fire. So the circle represents the great spirit. It represents the individual. Okay. Two forces of the mental mm -hmm. and the other is spiritual. Together, they create the circle. Mm -hmm. When you clean half of the circle, a semicircle is left. Mm -hmm. That is, O or, or oh. C's, something like that. It's left. I'm using C because I'm not contradicting myself when I made mention of the word degree and the position. Okay. Because all faces the left side, mm -hmm. like the Wexin moon. And C faces the left side, the, the, the right side, that is the west walls, the westward position, representing the waning crescent okay. moon. But here I'm talking general, okay. so I'm not contradicting myself, okay. as the logicians will say. <laughs> I will use C or O to make it simple for the lay person to understand. Okay. That's what I'm using this word. When you clean half of the circle, mm -hmm. it becomes half a circle or a semi-circle. Semi means half. So a half circle. A half circle doesn't, be, uh, doesn't mean we have the spirit completely. But the half of the circle means the soul, okra. Oh, okay. So the emotional, the one with imaginative qualities, okay. the one with attachment, okay. feelings, okay. pain, emotions. Okay. So it's not half spirit. It's not half spirit. Okay. It is the soul. Okay. So the symbol of the soul in astrology is half or the semicircle. Or C. Or C, thank you. Or all oh. generally. But the full circle represents the spirit. The spirit. So the half circle or semicircle represents the soul. Okay. In other ways, it is also known as the personality. Okay. Putting two things or bringing two things together, earth and water. Okay. They are the inferior elements. They are known as personality okay. uh, or personal symbol. Okay. We have the vertical line and the horizontal line. The vertical line represents the male principle. Okay. It represents inequality. Okay. One greater than the other. Okay. In astrology, the vertical line will represent the two positions, which I call the solstitial areas. Hmm? Solstitial areas. <laughs> solstitial areas. Okay. The point where the solstice is, okay? Okay. The summer solstice, where we have the longer days, shorter nights, and we have the, 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 the winter solstice. We have longer nights okay. and a shorter day. Okay. So the vertical line represents these two, two solstices, okay. representing the beginning and the end of time. When it is 12 midnight, it represents the below of the vertical line. Okay. It represents the end of the, 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 the PM. Okay. We are entering AM. Okay. So when it is 12 PM, it represents the end of AM. And we have started from PM. So the vertical line represents Osiris, according to Egyptian esotericism, the God, the Father, the vertical line. The vertical line. It represents the three divisions of the vertical line. That is, according to, according to alchemy, it represents sulfur, mercury, and salt. We have the horizontal line. Horizontal line represents the female principle okay. and the mother known as Isis, whom you call the planet Venus. Venus. Yes. The horizontal line representing the female. Okay. When you cross the vertical and the horizontal line, they represent the material plane, which means that God the Father and God the Mother come together to create all things in our world. Okay, that's the plus sign. The plus sign. Okay. The plus sign represents the material plane. Okay. Sometimes it is not written as plus. Sometimes it is written as, as a vertical line with an arrow on top. Like the chamber and hall. A like this, yes. Okay. So if you bring the vertical line, you bring a, a, a triangle on top. Okay. It is also known as the material body, the okay. material plane. Okay. And so this, these simple examples are what I will use in explaining the meaning of the planetary symbols. I will not go further okay. to, in order to, 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 to prevent the boggling understanding of the lay person outside there. Okay. So the circle or the zero line is the, the spirit. The spirit. 
the half circle, circle. that's the O or the C, is the soul. the soul. And the plus sign is the material plane. Okay, so that's what you're going to... Yes, so the plus sign is the material body or the material plane. Okay, okay, sure. So let's go to the next... Um, okay, let me use... Planets. Yeah, the, the, the planets. Okay. For example, when you see the circle... Okay. The circle represents the sun. Yes. The sun is the spirit. Sure. It represents the vital force, cosmic energy, the mind of God, which you see as the circle. Mm -hmm. The semicircle represents the soul. Mm -hmm. It is the moon. The moon represents the soul. Okay. Have you seen that? We have seen signs in the heavens. For example, the moon changes its phases and positions. Yes. Sometimes it becomes full. Yes. Sometimes it becomes crescent, like this. Yes. When that crescent is facing, the, the, when the horns are facing the eastwards, it means that the moon is growing. We call it waxing crescent. Waxing means it is growing. Okay. When you see the horns facing westwards, it means that it is dying. We call it waning moon. Okay. Have you seen how our ancient used the semicircle to represent the shape of the moon. So that of the moon is the sign. Okay. And what we have made here is the symbol representing the sign above. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So the moon represents the soul and we use it to represent the semi-circle. Okay. Now let's come to the planet Jupiter. Jupiter. Planet Jupiter, we call it the planet of expansion. How? Look at the glyph. Go the glyph. A semicircle. Yes. With a plus below. A semicircle with a plus below. below. But the plus is attached to the to the tip of the of the uh, or the ending part of the semicircle. Yes. The plus represents the material plane, and the semicircle represents the soul world. Mm -hmm. When we come to our body, the semicircle represents the soul, and the plus below attached to the semicircle represent the material body. Mm -hmm. I was talking about the degree or the position of any of the glyphs having its own meaning. Okay. When you look at the, 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 the symbol of the planet Jupiter, you can see that the semicircle representing the soul is above and the plus attached to that semicircle is below. So the above has its own meaning and the below has its own meaning. The above means that the soul has expanded or expansion of the soul beyond the material body. Mm -hmm. Whilst still the soul is attached to the material body. When we say expansion of the soul, it doesn't mean that the soul has separated itself from the material body. You are a, you are a living entity okay. and you have a soul inside you. There are certain things that you do which the energies from the outside world will transmute or affect the properties of the material body and the soul inside. The way you lead your life determines the properties of your soul and the body. Whether you become coerced, grossed, or so dense, attached to the soul and preventing it from growing, or it becomes loose to the extent that the soul is able to expand itself within the material body. On the esoteric front, on the exoteric aspect, it opens doors or it opens door for you to get anything that you need in your life. So the semicircle above plus below means expansion of the soul okay. on the material plane or within the material body but still attached to the material body. So it is explaining an incarnated soul. But the and soul has expanded beyond the material body. An incarnated soul. I don't there are souls that are not incarnated means to live on a material plane. Okay. To become, to be attached to some flesh okay. and blood. The, the soul is living inside it. We okay. call you an incarnation. Okay. But when we use the word dismembered soul, it means that the soul has no representation here on the material plane, leading the life. The soul is separate, living 
its life on the astral plane. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what does this symbol, what effect does it have on the human or someone who is who I can refer to as a Jupiter person or, or having these Jupiter qualities? It is not always to the positive aspect. Okay. Duality okay. in nature. There is duality in all. Like the moon. The moon is dual. Mm -hmm. Because one time it was growing. Some other time it was dying. <laughs> Showing same, 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 same signs or face. Yes. Like the banana here and there. So the one facing the eastwards, meaning it is growing. That's one part of it. The other one facing the westwards, representing its death. So duality. One is growing, one, one is, is dying. dying. We use it to represent the moon. Okay. Like the tarot card. The high priestess who is in representation of the moon. Okay. Represent duality. Okay. Sitting in between two pillars of Jachin and Boaz. Hmm. We'll come to talk about it later. On our next episode. On our next episode. <laughs> when you come to this world, you come in, you enter into this world, it is your responsibility to lead a moral life that will determine the properties or the policies of your soul and your body. Okay. Jupiter means expansion. Okay. With expansion, sometimes when it is in affliction, like opposition or square with another planet, these qualities become the opposite. Or it does not expand itself in the material body to the fullest. Sometimes it becomes rough or confused. Okay. Jupiter represents confusion when it is in Capricorn. Okay. It represents mental and emotional tension. If the mind is not at peace and the emotion is not at peace, how will you be able to expand beyond your material body? It means that something is wrong somewhere. Okay. But Jupiter is very strong in Cancer. But it is weak in Capricorn, at sign. Okay. But it is strong in water sign, Cancer. Okay. Hmm. When Jupiter is in Leo, constellation Leo, it re it's represents expansion of recognition, someone who is being recognized in the society. Okay. This is a simple example representing or showing expansion of planet Jupiter, manifesting on the material side of the person's life. Okay. The same Jupiter, when it is found in Libra, Jupiter represents restlessness. Hmm. Yes. A restless mind and a restless soul. It brings about lack of emotional and mental rest, sleeplessness, vivid dreams, hallucinations, okay. severe and deep mood swings. They are all part of Jupiter's qualities when it is in Libra. Okay. These qualities become expanded. Jupiter represents expansion, okay. and wherever it is, it represents expansion. Okay. But when I use it in relation to the major arcana tarot cards, the tenth card, it shows wheel of fortune. It means that change, change of an experience, change of something from one state to the next state, or from one level to the next level. Okay. When Jupiter is found in Aries, it means that community of people, it brings together people with the same ideologies, well-defined program, okay. people with the same aim and objective. Okay. It brings them together. Okay. But what happens inside is being made a fool out of. As Jupiter represents expansion, the thing happens or transpires to its fullest. That's yes. Jupiter in Aries. Jupiter in Aries. Okay. That is the meaning. And when you see Jupiter in Gemini, it okay. represents loneliness. Oh. Expansion of loneliness. People that are born in the first decanate of Gemini mm -hmm. from the 21st of May mm -hmm. to 30th May, marry late. Oh. Male or female. With the females, most of them are unlucky. Mm -hmm. They will have children without husbands. 
With the males, one will stay for long before entering into marriage or being engaged to someone else. It represents loneliness. In the tarot, it represents the eight of swords. Mm. Yes. That's sad. Let's move on to the next planet. That's planet Venus. Planet Venus has a circle representing the spirit and the plus below. Yes. It means that the spirit has expanded beyond the material plane okay. or the material body okay. through what is known as love, unconditional love. Mm. One will only attain the grace of God, which Venus represents, through unconditional love, okay. compassion, sympathy, and empathy. So the plus below and the circle above represent the expansion of the spirit, mm. whose life is beyond the material body. Okay. You are laughing. Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay, so that means the circle is in higher um, degree. Thank you. Okay. And okay. the plus is below. Okay. Uh, Lower degree. I did say that the plus is also written as a vertical line with an arrow on top. Yes. So you come there. Yes. It represents life. On the other side, the circle above represents the astral plane. Okay. And the plus below represents the material plane. Okay. Venus symbolizes the material nature or the mother nature. Okay. Before anything will occur or happen around you, plants growing, raining, waterfalls, etc., the influence comes from the astral plane. And Venus is responsible for that. That is why when you look at one of the major arcana cards, the, the number three, but the fourth in position, the empress, you will see her leaning in her own, own chair where you can see a red pillow behind her. She, she holds a wand in her hand with the sun above it. You can see 12 stars upon her head showing that Mother Nature depends on the sun. As we said, the sun represents the spirit. The circle above represents the spirit, meaning the sun which you see above that one she holds in her hand, communicates with the 12 constellations, with the 12 stars upon her head, okay. through which she is able to manifest everything on the material plane. Okay, so let's come to the manifestations on the material plane, according to these symbols. Okay. The manifestation on the material plane means our connection to Earth. Okay. The astral plane is connected to Earth. Seeing the Empress, also known as Venus, shows that my connection to earth, my connection to earth mm -hmm. tells me that abundance is unlimited. Mm -hmm. Everything will keep growing so far as we live. And our connection to earth will always make everything possible. Put a seed in the earth. It is connected to earth. It will grow. Mm -hmm. Remove your sandals and walk barefoot. You are connected to earth. And it brings abundance of vitality in your own body. Bringing enough vital energy to your etheric or energy body wow. to feed the chemical body. Your connection to earth must always remind you that abundance is unlimited. Okay. So the Venus has a circle on top of a plus. That's the symbol. That's the symbol. Okay, so let's go to the next um, planet, which is Mars. Planet Mars? Yes. Planet Mars is the opposite of Venus. Venus. Okay. Aries, the house of Mars, or the sign of Mars, is in opposition with Libra, okay. the house of, or the sign of Venus. Venus rules Libra, Mars rules Aries. So they are not in agreement with or in sympathy with mm -hmm. each other. So are the symbols. Okay. With Mars, you can see the zero, the spirit below. Yes. As I said, the arrow, I used it in my example. You will see an arrow on top, the vertical line with an arrow on top of this circle. Yes. It's the symbol of Mars. It represents that the material plane or the material body has compressed or overshadowed the spiritual body of the person living on the material plane. Hmm. When you read the Cherub Book of Numbers, the number 18 is written. Okay. Materialism, which strives to destroy the spiritual side of the nature. Okay. 
Mars represents destruction. So when you see the circle below with the arrow on top, the material plane has crumpled or trampled or suppressed the energies or the ability of the spirit attached to the spiritual body, attached to the material body. That is why the number of mass is 9, 18, or 27. All those bearing these numbers are materialistic by nature. They may come face to face with esotericism or the spirit world, yet materialism never paves way for them to experience. Mass also represents the Luciferian forces. That's what they do. Mm. They bring materialist, materialism to your doorstep. Things that have no destination, any rational destination. Everyone is materialistic. So far as you live on a material plane, you become materialistic. Mm -hmm. But not to the extreme by making it overshadowing the spiritual activities of your life. So mass represent imprisonment of the spirit by the material body. So it's constant. It's constant. That's why we have that symbol. Mm. When, you see, when you look at Aries, people say that Aries is impulsive by nature. Okay. They do things without thinking further. After they have done so, they only come back and their conscience tells them, what have you done? After they have done the thing, they come to the realization that this is what I've done. I shouldn't have done that. It's caused by mass. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you see mass, mass also represents selfishness. In materialism, there are people that are very selfish. They are never satisfied with what they have. They always want more. Mass does that. They are one of the elements or the properties of mass. You will not move further because of time. Okay. There are further explanations to all the planetary glyphs I have given. That doesn't mean that I cannot explain them all. I can, to the highest degree, just that due to time. Time is not on our side. Yes, yeah, so let's move to the next. Give me another one. Saturn. Saturn, thank you. Saturn has a plus with a semicircle attached to it below. Yes. It is the opposite of Jupiter, and Jupiter and Saturn are always enemies. <laughs> In some way, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because of the aspect, sometimes they agree. Okay. But in nature, generally, okay. they disagree. Okay. You can see this in uh, Capricorn, ruled by Saturn. Okay. Uh -huh. As Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, Jupiter also rules somewhere, like Sagittarius. Okay. A Capricorn will suffer. Grief in the hands of a Sagittarian. Any sign that is found behind you is your 12th sign. And at any, every 12th sign is where our grief lies. Okay. Again, Jupiter, when it is in Capricorn, the place or the, 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 the sign or the house of Saturn, mm -hmm. I made mention of it, bringing mental and emotional confusion or tension. Tension. Yes. If Saturn is found in Cancer, it represents wandering. Okay. It also stands for Peter and relentless enemies made from one's own family in connection to one's father. Okay. But the person will become so attached to the mother. Okay. So unlike Jupiter, Saturn is the material plane is compressing the soul. Thank you very okay. much. So as the plus can be found above, okay. and the degree or the position, the yes. plus is above, and the semicircle is found attached to it below. Yes. So it represents compression, okay. compression, compression, or limitation, restriction of the soul mm -hmm. inside the physical body. Okay. And that's the role of planet Saturn. Okay. It is the only planet that kicks the ass of everyone in life. It is the bringer of karma mm -hmm. and the controller of time. Okay. When you see this symbol, it represents being a puppet in your life. Okay. You should be able to live above your, your lower animal desires. But Saturn will bring every material thing 
to you. Okay. And veer off your concentration from the spiritual side of your life. If the soul is compressed, you are always living in your emotions mm -hmm. than your thoughts. It means that something is wrong somewhere mm -hmm. and it is caused by the planet, Saturn. Okay. Saturn, con Saturn controls the human mind. Mm -hmm. Like the satanic forces, they control the human mind. But the Luciferian forces, mass, control the human sexual feelings. That's what they do. Oh, so satanic forces is actually different from a Luciferian, yes. Luciferian forces. The satanic forces appeared as far back as 8,000 BC in the oh. age of cancer. Oh, okay. But Luciferian forces appeared in the Cenozoic period, 22 million years ago in 13,000 BC, during the age of Libra, when our solar system was found in the right angle, or the, right, the right side of our galaxy, the Okuri galaxy at that time. Yes. <laughs> I can't say anything about that. No. I know nothing about that. I also don't know anything <laughs> about it. Okay, so let's go to the next planet, Uranus. Uranus? Yes. Okay, Uranus has two semicircles. Yes. With a vertical line in the middle and plus attached to it. Yes. It represents what is known as hope. Hope. And spiritual guidance. That will guide your soul to its destination. Okay. But this same planet, with these two semicircles attached to its sides, okay. represent the individual self, mm -hmm. self-realization. Okay. It also represents sudden change, destruction, unexpected danger, accident, destruction of the material body. That is what Uranus does. Yes. <laughs> Planet Uranus represent change, change of ideas, change of plans, okay. change of place. Okay. Wherever you are, when you are working somewhere, you want to leave the place and go somewhere else. It's caused by the planet Uranus. Okay. Planet Uranus brings misunderstanding. Okay. It brings opposition. It brings waywardness. Okay. It brings stubbornness, unconventionalism. Some, there are some people who hate to follow rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Planet Uranus. Mm -hmm. On the esoteric front, it represents memory. It also represents the cosmic man. Okay. God the Father. Uranus. Uranus. Okay. When two Uranuses come together, example, mm -hmm. like four, the number of Uranus is four. Okay. Four and four gives you eight. Yes. Eight is written as two circles, the lemon is kit, the upper circle and the lower circle. One yes. represents the higher nature, and the lower nature represents the lower circle. Mm -hmm. If two, a four plus four will give you eight, the upper circle is four, and the lower circle is also four, yes. giving you eight. That is when the soul is compressed. Mm. Among all the planets, the one that makes people suffer most in their lives, and makes the person or the subject so lonely and isolated in his life is planet Uranus. Okay. If it is found in any of the zodiac signs, like, for example, cancer, okay. it causes a lot of problems over there. When it is found in Taurus, the same thing. Leo, the same thing. Scorpius, the same thing. Okay. Or Capricorn, the same thing. It brings fail when it, 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 it is found in Capricorn, it makes the person faithful to, maybe the person is a female. Okay. It makes the person faithful to the partner. Okay. But it brings about lasting mental confusion to the person's life of doubting the partner. Okay. Yes. That's so planet Venus is very good. But as you, can, as you can see, the dualities, the two crescent waning and raising crescent on its sides with the vertical line, and the horizontal line crossing each other with a small circle below it. Below it. It means that it will really crumple upon your own spirit. Wow. Because of a rejection. These two circles are looking at their opposite sides. It represents rejection. Mm. It represents being ostracized, being marginalized by people. Okay. You are attached to a group. You can do the thing well, but some people will conspire and make a fool out of you. You will feel very lonely. It will bring you loneliness in your life. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Its wow. number is 4, 13, 22, 31. Wow. I'm even, I don't know what to say. I don't know. Let's go to the next um, planet. Give me Neptune. another planet. Neptune. Yes. Neptune has a crescent. Yes. That's a semicircle lying down with a cross. Yes. Below. True or true or false? It's true. <laughs> it means that it means intuitive faculty. It means creation or the power of creation. The creative force. Something that is creating something within the soul. Psychic ability. Mediumship. It brings high imaginative qualities. It also gives you empathy. Benefit from your own observation, dreams, visions, and mysticism okay. is attached to the planet Uranus. It glyph, the crescent moon with the plus below that. Planet Neptune. Planet Neptune. Yes. Planet Neptune means the soul has attached itself to its psychic body. So the soul and the spirit have come together. And you are able to fully experience the spirit world. Okay. That's why it represents mystics. The spirit world. It gives the person intuitive ability. Okay. It also, on the other side, it represents hallucinations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Delusions. It also stands for Science, understanding of science and omens, outside you. That's why it represents, it stands for Pisces, or it governs constellation Pisces according to the Greek accidental nativities. I'll come there one day, I'll come, come and explain it. Okay. So Neptune rules constellation Pisces. It represents rejection. It's also, it also represents marriage. And it represents fulfillment. The number seven, standing for Neptune, stands for faith, GDA. Okay. Yes. What are some of the manifestations on the material plane? Manifestations? Yes. It brings restlessness. To the human body? To the human body. Okay. You will never rest in your life from birth to death. Okay. You will have to strive and strive and strive and wander from one place to another. Long journeys. Okay. Through this restlessness, you get your profit or your proceeds after you have had the money. Compassion is attached to Neptune. Sympathy is attached to Neptune. You'll be sharing all your resources to the poor and the needy. That's what they do. They will make huge donations from their funds and give it to the poor and the needy. Although they need that amount to make or to undertake certain important tasks in their lives, Mm -hmm. but they may have to sacrifice themselves and give these bounty amounts to people that need them badly. Amen. Amen. Last one, the Pluto. Pluto. Pluto, yes. Thank you. Pluto has the crescent. Yes. With a small circle upon, upon it. A small circle in that dish. Yes. With a plus below. True or false? True. Today you are testing me. <laughs> True. Pluto represents the underworld. It shows that the spirit can lift itself above all attachments okay. in our life. When you come to the material plane, Okay. We become attached to something. Okay. We love our wives, we love our husbands, we love our cars, we love our houses, etc. In the Babylonian system, constellation Scorpius is ruled by mass okay. to its negative aspect. And mass represents materialism, that mm-hmm. is attachment. Yes. But in the Greek system, they place Pluto as the sole ruler of constellation Scorpius. Okay. Pluto represents attachment. It also represents support. 
You have seen that small circle inside that dish, yes. representing the support that one is likely to receive on a material plane. Okay. It stands for lack of forgiveness. Okay. It stands for losses. Okay. It stands for growth to the positive aspect. It also represents dreams and fantasies in our own world. If one doesn't free himself from this, he may have to suffer. If Pluto is seen in Libra, in the mid heaven, that is crossing the meridian, okay. it stands for pleasure attached to esotericism. Okay. That doesn't make completely the person an esoterist. In the outside world, the person becomes a mystic or an occultist, yes. pure in the eyes of people, but in secrecy, the person is very dirty. Hmm. Yes. Wait, so let me ask this question. Um, you see that small thing in that dish. So between that, which one has the highest degree? It means that the soul okay. has crumpled the spirit. That's why I said attachment. Okay. In esotericism, Scorpius itself represents the astral plane, okay. the lower astral plane. Okay. Our animal natures, our animal pleasures, our attachment to things we can never omit from our lives. We can never drive away from our lives. We have become imprisoned in those things. Okay. So the spirit is imprisoned inside that the, the crescent moon. Okay. The one is living within his or her lower desires. Okay. So they are on the same degree. Thank you. Okay. So if okay. you see someone like a Scorpio practicing spirituality, some strong element of Materialism is attached okay. and it blocks the person's path to fully reaching the spiritual realization okay. or enlightenment. Okay. So the scope is a spiritualist, but materialism is attached, which is the hidden purpose or rationale behind the performance of that spiritual ritual or whatever. Okay. Yes. Some of their manifestations. Manifestations. Yes. It brings about losses. Oh. Depending on the aspect. Okay. If it is a bad aspect, mm -hmm. depending on such stuff, okay. will bring about loss of child okay. or loss of children, okay. loss of properties, okay. debt. Eh? It brings about loneliness. Okay. You have seen some women, okay. but they have no husbands. People with such bad aspects with Pluto comes with death of husbands. It brings the person a widow or a widower. Hmm. It's okay. Hmm. It's okay. Amen. Amen. We've come to the end of today's episode. Any words of motivation? What I would say is, okay. glyphs can be self-made. Okay. It depends on your, on, on, on the element or the properties of your concept. When you are creating a glyph, it must have a basis. Okay. Rationality. That logically makes sense because you are making it a material thing. To represent a sign or something in nature, when there's no sense in it, it will have no place in the future. Okay. Glyphs can, can be used to represent character or people okay. or time or any event in nature. Okay. Amen. Amen. We've come to the end of today's episode. If you have any questions, just put it in the comment section. I'll read them out. And Dr. was going to answer everyone one after the other. My name is Jennifer Yaya, and I had Dr. Park the African philosopher, on today's episode. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Same time next week, we shall meet again. <laughs>